Welcome to Somebody You Love or The Sale of Two Titties. I'm Jenna Love. And I'm Holly Hart. And we're experts in disappointing our parents, breaching community guidelines and banging the people who vote against our rights. Before we begin, we'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we are recording today, which for me is the Ngunnawal people. And for me is the Doric and Gundungurra peoples. We'd like to acknowledge that if you are listening to this podcast in so-called Australia, that sovereignty was never ceded. We also want to make it clear up front that we can only speak from our own experiences. The sex working community is wonderfully diverse and as white cis women, we have a lot of privileges within the industry. We can't speak on behalf of our peers who find themselves facing more severe stigma and discrimination than we do. It's always been our hope that by creating this podcast, we humanize sex workers and we provide a platform to share the voices that represent the diversity of the sex worker community. But when it's just me and Holly, please keep in mind that it's a very limited perspective that you are getting. Today, we're going to talk all about jealousy. We get asked a lot about jealousy, whether we experience it towards each other, towards our clients, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I got to say, right, I'm going to, I got to say this straight up out of the gate, I feel like this question stems from some amount of misogyny because I think that there is always – I so often hear talk about is there lots of bitchiness in the industry and is there lots of gossip and all of this? And and I've heard that repeated by people in the industry as well saying, oh, this industry is just so bitchy and so gossipy. And I feel like – because so many people assume that the industry is full of all women, which as we've covered a million times, it is not. Um, I feel like there's this sense of, oh, it, it must be bitchy and everyone must be jealous and catty and all of that because it's a whole a group of women. Um, and yeah, as I said, we're not all women. Um, and also I just think that's bullshit. I just think that's gross. And I don't think that just because there are uh, a group of women involved in any capacity that that means that there's going to be jealousy I'm not into it so I just want to I just want to flag that straight out the gate I don't think I've had that experience as much that people sort of question whether it's bitchy or or anything like that Mm -hmm. Um, I have definitely heard from within the industry uh, people say you know yeah the industry is so bitchy or the um, oh gosh I'm trying to think of one example that I heard where it was like Oh, I don't know. Just that all all of the all of the people within the industry are all crazy and they're all gossipy and they're all bitchy and whatever. Mm. And I was like, but well, that's that's a, that is a massive generalization. And that was that was someone within the industry, you know. Um, but from outside of it, I, I don't feel like I hear that um, or I've seen a lot of that that assumption. Uh, yeah, but I have heard it from within the industry. People sort of say that, and I'm like, really? I mean, I've experienced bitchiness and gossiping and and nonsense in every job and every industry that I've worked in. I think there's just that's just mm. humans uh, love a bit of drama. Um, so I don't think that's restricted to the sex industry. And I think, as you said, I do think from within it it is a misogynistic view. And yeah, I, I, just because I haven't experienced it as much from outside of the industry. You know, I'm definitely not um, saying that doesn't exist. I just haven't had uh, that experience with it that that you have. Mm. I haven't heard people say that. And uh, it's perhaps perhaps the way I hear it is less overt and maybe I'm like extrapolating on what I'm hearing and sort of making my own, you know, because what I hear a lot, like I get a lot of clients asking, you know, if, if we, like if we are jealous, if our client goes to see another sex worker or something sure. like that. I feel like that's a reasonable question in the sense that a lot of broader society uh, views sex as something that is so intimate and emotional. And it is, it can be for sure. There's a lot of space for that. But uh, I think when you do it for a job, you recognize that sex can be a variety of things and it doesn't need to to mean something necessarily. And a lot of people have that monogamous sort of mindset and so they're very used to the idea that uh, if one person has good sex with somebody that if they have good sex with somebody else there might be jealousy involved and that that's confronting and that's what's the word uh, that that should bring up some insecurities and uh, and and maybe even Mm. that's a reflection of some of the clients emotions themselves is that maybe they feel a little bit jealous sometimes when they develop an attachment maybe they don't but um, then they're wondering I suppose 
you know, if the same is for us, that we feel feel those those emotions as well. So I think that's a very fair question, and I'm I'm not sure if it is. Oh, I agree. Rooted in misogyny as much as it is possibly rooted in monogamy. I would suggest it's also rooted in a lack of acknowledging sex workers' work, which is not. And I'm not saying like to be clear, I'm not 100%. saying that if a client says to me, "Or oh, do you get jealous if you see if someone you see see someone else." I'm not, I don't get offended. I'm not going, oh my God, you're a misogynist. And you're, you know, that's not what I'm saying at all. No. I'm just trying to examine the reason we ask these questions and the way we think about these things. Definitely. Um, and yeah, I definitely think like it comes back to, well, this is my job, you know, yeah. like at the end of the day. And I never, I'll never, ever, ever forget this one argument I had on Reddit years ago where one guy was like, oh, I'm just sick of hearing sex workers work. Like you guys need to get a new slogan. Um, you know, everyone knows sex work is work. It's, you need to like push the movement further or something. And I was like, bitch, they don't like, I'm sorry, but the reason the slogan is still the slogan is because of stuff like this. Like, I know this, this is really on a tiny, on a tiny scale, but we can't drum it into people's heads enough and we can't drum it into our own heads enough as well. Like it's something we have to keep reminding ourselves too. Um, so anyway, I just constantly, I'm like, no, we like the, yeah. It pisses me off because a lot of people are like, oh, we all know sex work is work. And I'm like, well, but do we really, 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 if we really think about the language we use around it? Um, so there's a few different kind of elements, right, of jealousy when you're talking about the sex industry. I wanted to talk about this idea of uh, sort of uh, being jealous or envious of another worker's perceived success. Because mm. I think that this is something that, that can even if we don't feel jealous about it, it's something that can be confronting to all of us. And a big part of it, right, is the way that we market ourselves on social media. Like I know that we all know that social media is fake yeah. and that it's, you know, so much of what you read online is not real and, and all like we know that, but I still like I still believe everything I read, <laughs> you know. I still go, oh wow, that worker's like on this like crazy, really successful tour. And then I find out that that's actually not what they were doing. Yeah, I always struggle with the uh, when people say social media is fake, and I know that's just such a, a broad sweep. But I, I, and obviously I agree with what you're saying, and we'll delve further into that. But I always find like a lot of sex workers, a lot of people sort of say, "Oh, social media, it's all fake." And I think sometimes that detracts from what we the efforts that we do put in on social media. A lot of us do put our true thoughts and hearts and emotions on there. And we do share actual experiences with clients that we've enjoyed. And, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you can't just believe everything you see on social media and think that exists in a vacuum. You can't think that, you know, all of the nice things is all that's happening and that there are not more complex things happening behind the scenes. And then, you know, I don't need to educate most adults about this concept. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, it's obviously worth reminding people, uh, and ourselves from time to time, but also, yeah, there is a lot on social media and particularly on sex workers, social media, which is legit. People do share some really vulnerable sides of themselves. And, um, and a lot of the stuff that we post can be quite raw and quite, um, quite us. And I think stepping away from that, um, that trope that we, that we all have two separate personalities and we have, you know, all of our work mm -hmm. personalities are total personas when, when really a lot of it is just, it's, it's us. It's just a, a heavily filtered side of us where you're not seeing um, the, the, the nitty gritty, I suppose. So just wanted to, um, to sort oh, of hundred percent agree point that out before we yeah, move no. on to, to, yeah, the point that, that, yeah, we can't perceive success based on social media because, yeah, you, you're not seeing all of the dark sides. You're not often seeing the um, the 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 quiet weeks or the um, you know the cancelled bookings or the the huge expenses that people have and and things like that. So, I think um I think no, thank you so much for bringing that up. I also hate it when people say social media is fake, and mm. I think the reason I said it was was just to get this point across. Exactly, but you're spot on. It's it's I, I don't think it's accurate, and I think it's. Um, kind of a damaging take on its own. I think maybe what it's trying to say is all social media has the potential to be fake. So it's like anything you're looking at. Um, yeah, it's curated. It may not be real. Like yeah. that you you don't know, exactly. I guess. Yeah. Um, but I, I agree with you. I mean, you and I put 
some some really really genuine shit out there um you know and and a lot of people in the industry do a yeah. lot of people are really vulnerable and and in all industries um so yeah fully fully agree um but i do think it is just that thing of um like with anyone's social media it's the same with people's personal social media you don't post your dark shit on there and to be honest, when people do, you're like, whoa, bit TMI. Like sometimes it's, you know, then you get judgment for that as well. So it's a bit of a lose-lose situation. Absolutely. But there's also the thing of like looking at somebody's rates. Somebody yeah. might be charging a really high rate and you go, wow, if I charged that and did the same amount of hours I'm doing, fuck, I'd be earning blah, blah. But there's no way of knowing that they are doing the same amount of hours as you or they might be doing more. Like there's just there's just no way of doing – sorry, no way of knowing yeah. uh, how how much money someone's earning, how much they, they like their job, how many bookings they have that they yeah. love versus how many – they dread like it, there's yeah. just no way of knowing and and things like we said like dependents or um illnesses that they're dealing mm-hmm. with or um you know uh, unexpected expenses that they have in their life that uh contribute to financial emotional strain all of those things we you really don't know and i think you can make um assumptions and you can say oh well you know that she's always wearing uh you know the most expensive shoes or she got gifted that mm-hmm. or you know and you can get sucked into seeing uh, a bit of that branding and thinking that it's true but it's uh it's really not reflective of anything rates um branding photos they they don't tell you about a person's um personal situation their finances their relationship with their jobs so uh in in terms of jealousy and like whether we get jealous of another worker's perceived success um i don't think i get jealous i definitely find it motivating sometimes i find certain people um you know for well for example you uh book a lot more than me Um, and I find that motivating. I'm like, oh, wow, that's, you know, that's exciting. And you make me want to work harder and, uh, and build my brand a bit more. Uh, and that's, that's, uh, not ever a jealousy thing. And and similarly with other workers who I've had, um, really personal, cause I'm quite forward and I'll, I'll, I ask people often, you know, what they earn or what they've, (laughs) how many bookings they do in a day and things like that. And, um, which I know some people really are not cool with. It's, it's quite taboo to ask people those sorts of questions, but I, I really, you know, I'm an open book for a lot of, uh, a lot of people. So I like to share that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I find that inspiring and and motivating and, and interesting. I really like to, um, to see my friends thrive and to hear that people in the industry are thriving. And I I don't experience jealousy at all. I don't think I ever have. Um, I do see some people's rates and think, Oh, wouldn't be bad to earn that much for a booking. I feel like that would be really nice. Um, I do find probably the closest I get is if I'm doing doubles, I like us to get paid um, the same, not out of a jealousy sort of thing, but maybe it's it's aligned with that in a way. I just don't feel like it's just to have two people join you for a booking and to pay one of them significantly less. I feel like that's a little bit, ugh, it just feels off to me. Um, and yeah, so is that jealousy? Maybe. That's uh, that's my experience. What's your perspective there? Mm. Yeah, I don't think it's something I I struggle with much. I do. I have this funny thing I find in myself where I go on on social media or, or whatever, and I see like a worker has posted um, about some like fine dining restaurant. You know, like they've taken the photo of a thing in like a fancy hotel, and I have this little thing of like, oh, I want to be taken to fine dining restaurants, and then I go, no, you don't, Jenna. What's wrong with you? You don't even like that. Like you don't want. Like I get this this jealousy that's like a it's it's like I sh- I feel like I should be jealous, but right. then I go, wait a minute, that's not your vibe. You're not into that, and you haven't marketed yourself in that direction for a reason. So it's fine. Like because mm. I personally, I'm, I'm you know, in, particularly in really quote unquote classy establishments, I feel a bit uncomfortable. Like it's not really my jam. Um, so, uh, you know, and then the same with like when, if somebody posts about, um, like a, a week long fly me to you or something, or lo- even lo- like I've done two fly me to you bookings in my life. I think three, I don't know, not many. Right. Um, and obviously it's not something Holly does because of her agoraphobia, but you know, I, there are, there are workers out there who regularly have them and are regularly posting about them. And I go, Oh, I want to be flown across the world and I want to be taken away for a week away. And then I go, no, you don't, you don't want that. That's not actually for you. Like that would, I mean, spending a week working a week straight, that sounds awful. That sounds terrible. What am I talking about? You know? 
Um, and flying all the time, like I, I have, I don't get enough time at home as it is. And I am grateful for when I have been booked for Fly Me to Use. And as the occasional thing, I'm like, oh, I feel super fancy, but it's not something I want all the time. So yeah, I get this weird, like societal pressure jealousy that I then talk to myself and go, no, you're an idiot. You yeah. don't want that, babe. You're fine. So <laughs> that is that's, that's my experience with it. Yeah. But I, I just think, um, I don't know. I've always been a big fan of us all supporting one another. I think yeah. we, you know, we all get better if we all work together. And I just don't think um, how anybody else is doing. The industry is huge and I just don't, I've never felt like that real direct kind of competition. Mm. Perhaps because I'm lucky that I don't live near many other sex workers. That could be a factor in it. If I lived in a big city, uh, maybe I would feel more sort of competition or something, but I've just never really... Uh, worried about that so something holly and i were asked a little while ago was like how do we feel when one of our clients uh books the other person right and like do we feel kind of jealous or or you know do we have any ugh, like yick feelings about it <laughs> i don't know how i'll transcribe that <laughs> any any icky feelings about it and we did answer this in our maybe our most recent bonus episode i think yeah, I think I definitely have heard this question a lot um, during my time in the industry is, is do you guys feel jealous when somebody else or, or do you not want to know when one of your clients has booked somebody or, you know, uh, how do you feel around those things? Um, and I think we're both pretty loudly um, comfortable with our clients <laughs> seeing anyone. I think I'm so quick to recommend people. Um, I'm a really big advocate for the Canberra sex work community in particular, um, I guess because I haven't been to any other cities, but because I've taken a lot of time to get to know a lot of the workers here, I, I just think they are the best. I'm obviously biased, but I think they are so great. And so I'm really comfortable recommending most of the workers here in Canberra. I think they're just excellent and particularly the ones that I've gotten to meet. Um, I, I'm, you know, really, I love my clients meeting other people. And I think that variety is, is really healthy. I also like, uh, I also like people just supporting the industry. I think that's great. And I think there's so much space for that. I love people supporting my friends. I like to see my friends, uh, financially succeed and have clients who are lovely and all of my clients are lovely. So that's really, really cool. I, I never feel jealous about that. I think the only time I've ever felt jealousy when one of my clients booked someone else, this is sort of tangential. Uh, it was one of my clients. Mm, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it was one of my clients who I, I had relegated to, uh, to a, a friends with benefit scenario, um, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. they were paying very, very low rates. Um, and we, were and and when I say very low, I mean like it was grandfathered. It was somebody I've been seeing from from probably pretty much as soon as I went private. So as my rates had gone up, they stayed on the low rates, and um, you know I don't do that much anymore these days. I don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I digress. Uh, they they were on these very low rates, and I thought that I don't know. I felt like there was something happening there maybe. And then one day they called me, and they said, oh. I went and got a ball wax today. Okay, cool. I was like, oh, nice. Cause you know, that's, you know, mm -hmm. what they did regularly for their grooming. And I was like, yeah, cool. And they were like, yeah, the, the girl, she started playing with my cock. And I was like, oh, that seems really unprofessional, like wildly unprofessional. What do you yeah. mean? And he said, oh yeah. yeah. And I was <laughs> like, like, I don't understand. And he was like, yeah, it was, it was really hot. And then she gave me a hand job and I was like, where the fuck was this place? Like, I was like, what the fuck is this? And I was yeah. shocked. And, and it was just the way the story was being told to me was like, mm. I was so uncomfortable. And anyway, this story sort of went on and on. And I, 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 I just remember not, not really jealousy, but like deep discomfort with the story. And anyway, it turned out eventually that they were talking about a sex worker here in Canberra who offered, you know, a hand job and a ball wax. And that was the service that they did. Right. Lovely. Great. Yep. Um, I, I yep. think she's retired since, or she, she moved away anyway. I, really cool. I love like awesome, uh, awesome idea for a service. I think that's really cute. But I, it was the way that 
it was just not openly discussed and it was brought up in this weird way that made me really uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and things were never the same after that. After that, I don't know. I felt like it was manipulative. I felt like it was an attempt to try to make me jealous. I don't know. Or whether it was trying to tell me that they'd seen someone else, but they were trying to gently, gently so that um, they could always have plausible deniability and say, oh, it was not a sex work. I don't know what the what it was about there. I don't mm. care. I don't care what our relationship is in life, whether you're a client or a friends with benefits or somewhere in between, whatever, um, or a partner. Like, I don't, like, I feel like honesty is fine or just don't tell me at all. Like I just don't do this weird little dance Mm. in the middle. That was definitely seems like a, a bit of a funny little game or something. Yeah, like, I felt like it was like a game it, and that fucked with me. I was like, yeah. no, nah, I'm not into it. I'm like, if you've yeah. seen another one of If you it know, said, hey, I went and saw this worker and what she does is offers this service and oh, it was really cool. Sick. Okay, no problem. That's awesome. What a blast. But the way it was like, I went to get a ball wax. And, and then she, she started like, playing with my dick. It's almost, yeah. It was really It's almost like <laughs> he had it in his head as a... I was just going in for a ball wax and then, oh, she just was so attracted to me. Like it was this narrative it's he had weird, that it wasn't... Isn't it? What he'd signed up for? I don't know. I don't yeah, know. No, weird. And it gave I'm me the you. hardcore ick. And I was like, I don't know if that was <laughs> like the intention, but it, it went the, the total opposite way, I think, of, of what he, he desired. And I was, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that sort of ruined things for me. So, look, this is a very isolated example. And I don't think anyone listening has been like, oh, I was definitely going to tell my sex worker or my friends with benefit or my wife that I went to get a hand job and someone played with my dick. I don't think that most people think that that's a smart way to um, to break any sort of <laughs> any sort of very situation odd. like that it was very strange but I thought I'd share the story because it it's uh it's an interesting anecdote uh but otherwise yeah I literally don't care I one I love it when my clients see other workers because great I think sometimes that variety is really healthy and I think particularly after you've been seeing somebody for many years or um or just regularly even for a short time you get in a rhythm. So I know then what makes you feel really good and you know what makes me feel really good. And so you tend to shortcut to those things. And it's not that things become monotonous. It's that you know what works. So you go straight to it. And I know I don't, but I know some people find that monotonous. And and by by that, I don't mean pick me. I'm, I'm the only hooker. What I mean is that I know that maybe my clients might start to find that monotonous. I, I think it's really healthy to know what works and to go straight to it and to do that. But some people mm. I, I know can find that boring. And so great. If you want to go and see other people and mix it up a little bit, awesome. If you want to mix it up with me, that's fine as well. But I think that variety is, is mentally healthy. I think it's, it's nice um, physically to go and get some different sensations and explore with somebody else. Uh, and I love the community. So I, I'm really supportive of you, um, you know, giving to the community in a broader sense. That's awesome. And I never feel jealous about it. Um, one of my absolute favorite clients uh, recently um, asked to book a doubles booking uh, with Jenna and I, or oh, well, actually asked for a doubles booking, and Jenna happened to be in town at the time, which was a wonderful, convenient uh, coincidence. <laughs> How convenient! <laughs> How convenient! And uh, and I actually had a moment where I was like, "Am I going to get a little bit jealous?" Like I thought, "Oh no!" Like, <laughs> yeah. what if? And like. I, I wasn't a deep concern. I was just like, mm, I wonder, I wonder how I'm going to feel in that scenario. And, uh, and he turned up and it was just fucking awesome. Like it was like some of the best sex ever. And, uh, and that's just really nice as well. I think, um, I don't know. It's just affirming. Maybe it's an, uh, the older I get sort of thing. I'm just so comfortable with me and I am what I am and I am who I am. And if you like it, great. And if you don't, that's fine. It, it I don't need to own uh, my partners or my clients or people I enjoy sex with. It's not a possessiveness thing. It's, I, I just want, um, what do they call it? Um, compersion. I just want the people I care about to be yep. happy. And that feels, <laughs> feels really nice. So yeah. Yeah. Look, generally I feel the same. I mean, if, if when my clients see other workers, I love it. I think, as you said, I think it's very healthy for them not to only be seeing me. Um, that obviously, as everyone knows, I'm very poly and that feels like a lot of pressure. And I also think, you know, just, yeah, in general, it, it's good to, it's a good reminder that it's my job and that, you know, that we're not in a relationship. There is no, absolutely no expectation of any kind of monogamy. I mean, there wouldn't be if we were in a relationship anyway, but yeah. you know, there certainly isn't when it, when we're talking about work, um, particularly if 
one of my clients books Holly. I'm just fucking excited. Like yeah. I, I don't know. I freaking love it. Like yeah. it's so. And I think Holly feels exactly. I the think same. that's unique like, to us, isn't we it? We're just like <laughs> yes, get it, yeah, get it. Like we just, oh, especially like if it's a client I really like, I'm like amazing because I really like you and I really like her. Yeah, and you guys are gonna have a bloody great time, and I'm pumped for that. Cool and then feeling. hopefully one day, at least once. The three of us can do it together. Even better. Yeah. Amazing. Like, yeah, <laughs> so into it. And I do think that is like we do have a somewhat – Holly and I have talked about the unique kind of quality of our relationship. Um, and, yeah, I can't I can't describe – like people have been asked about about jealousy with, with clients booking other workers, but they, they have asked a number of times specifically about it with Holly. Um, and it's not that I'm just okay with it. I'm genuinely – really excited when that happens yeah which yeah, is I'm stoked i don't know if that's weird but i love it yeah no. um and i think we know like because we know we're similar in a lot of ways and and very different in a lot of ways too but we know that the people who are having a good time with us are probably going to have a good time with the other person so sure. it's a pretty it's a bit of a short bet yeah to an extent. yeah there is um, some comfort in knowing when my clients are going to spend time with somebody yeah. that i i feel like okay it's a mm. it's a sure it's a dumb thing they're gonna yes. have a great time i i like yeah. them to to see and i that's why i tend to recommend certain people because i'm like okay i feel like you're aligned you know and you'll be really comfortable with this person or this person um but yeah i think we know each other really well to a point where, and our clients get a vibe of each other um, before they've even met. Like a lot of my clients who haven't met you yet feel like they know you already and, and I'm sure it's, it's yeah, vice totally. versa. So I think yeah. that that's a, a, a gentle entry, <laughs> you know, that's like. Yeah, okay. And we talk about each other in our bookings yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like I, my poor clients, they hear about Mr. Love and Holly yeah. constantly. My clients hear like, about Mr. Love and, and Jenna like all the time. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think actually I've been thinking about this idea recently because I've realized, so a friend of mine, I've talked about her on the show a little bit. She entered the industry a bit less than a year ago now and she lives not too far from me. And um, and I real, I think two of my sort of regulars have kind of moved on to her. And I said that to her the other day about one of them. I said, I reckon he's he's moved on to you. Like he's left me <laughs> for you, you know. Um, and she was like, yeah, I think that might be what's happened. And so I was thinking about this idea and I was like, how does that make me feel? Um, and, you know, to be honest, if it was like one of my fave regulars and I really looked forward to seeing them or something, I might be a bit like bummed. Um, but in this case with both of them, I was like, cool, no worries. And it really, it got me thinking again about this idea of how everyone, like it's not about that they like her more than me yes. or maybe they do. That's possible as well. But, or not that she's better than I am, yeah. but that whatever, like the, the cool, what I've always loved about sex and about relationships is that the dynamic between any two given people is completely unique. Mm -hmm. um, and so either they prefer their dynamic between the two of them or they get something, you know, different out of that or she's newer to the industry and is available with less notice than I am yeah. and that might suit their schedules better. And so that's a big and that's great. If if that if if they've found a worker that suits their needs better than I do, brilliant. Yeah. That's really good. And she's my mate and I'm glad she's got a couple of regulars building up. Like that's awesome. Yeah, we do, it doesn't have to be a, a personal affront to uh, to have a client prefer to see somebody mm. else. Or, um, and that's that's part of it is that yeah, if if some of my favorite clients go and see Jenna and decide they like her more, great. I I want them to be having a great time, and I don't want them to see me just because I'm the only one that they've seen and the only one that's available or whatever. I want them to see somebody that <laughs> yeah. they, they're having a great time with. That's. Yeah, that's I, I'm really happy for my friends and for the industry, and uh, and it's not about me. You don't have to take everything so personally. It, has, it doesn't have to be well. Oh, I'm not yeah. good enough, or I've failed at this, or mm. yeah, like you said, it's it's just a dynamic thing, and sometimes the sparks fly, and that's fine. So I um I have a regular who um uh, is he a patron? I can't remember. I think he is. But anyway, he listens to the show. He'll definitely be listening to this and he'll know who I'm talking about him. Um, and normally our bookings, I think, are usually maybe an hour and a half, two hours. I probably got this wrong. I don't know. <laughs> um, and I realised a little while ago he would talk about um, – he talks about the other workers he sees and they all sound bloody great. Um, and – and he'd talk about these trips and he often will see workers and do like overnights and like weekend trips and stuff like that. And the first time he said it, I was like, bitch, where's my overnights and weekend trips? Um, 
bitch. But the thing is, the reason, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I did not say that. To him. Um, but you know, my brain very quickly worked out. He's a real, uh, a bit of a geek and likes going to um, to conventions and sure. um, all that sort of stuff. And I don't really. And all of these other workers that he mentions, they do. They share that interest. Yeah. So that's that's the experience he has with them and the experience he has with me is different and neither is better or worse uh, and it's not that you know he wants to spend more money on them because they're better than I am or something you know yeah. and they may also be offering discounts if they're getting to go to this thing they want to go sure. to as well like who knows I don't know what you know um but yeah it's just that thing of there's so many different reasons um that a client may choose a different worker yeah um and I would say very rarely is it this person is better than that person, you know. Yeah. I think it's more that they suit you in a certain way or whatever. Yeah. So there's yeah. really no room for jealousy when it. you when you realise those things. It's No. It's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Plus, uh, yeah, sex work is work. So, you know, yeah. I don't know if. Yeah. Actually, they probably do. I was going to say, like, does the McDonald's on that side of the road get upset when the McDonald's on the other side of the road has more customers? And they probably do, actually. I mean, from but, a corporate oh, well. point of view, but I think the yeah. staff, the staff there, you know, making the burgers don't give a fuck. It's uh, no, yeah. well, they get paid the same rate though, don't they? Regardless, well, that's that's true. But I, it's not a good analogy. I mean, I get paid the same rate regardless of if my client sees X or Y. It's just, but I suppose it's a volume thing, isn't it? Anyway, look, it's it is a hard exactly. analogy, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, yeah. yeah. I don't. But uh, as we said, you don't know how much those other workers are earning. You really don't know. Even because that's the other thing, you know, if somebody does, um, you know, an extended booking with somebody, you don't know that they're not offering a really good discount. Yeah. yeah. Or that they've been grandfathered or yeah. what. Like that's yeah. that's the other thing. Just because someone's rate is listed, it doesn't even mean that's all. Oh, maybe they're getting tipped a huge amount. Yep. Like it. Yeah. Um, then the only other one I've been asked, and I don't get this one that much, but people sort of are, well, people ask a lot how Mr. Love feels about my job. And obviously we have talked about this on the show before and people will sort of ask if he sort of feels, I guess, jealous of my clients or yeah. Um, and I mean, he'd be better to answer this than, than me, but I'm I pretty sure he would. he'd say no. I'd love him to come on. The show. <laughs> I know. I think a lot of people would yeah. we'll work on him. <laughs> Um, what I'll say is I think that he is quite possibly envious of, uh, the freedom and the flexibility I have working for myself and working my own hours, um, certainly, uh, but actually of my clients and I mean, no, I don't think, I don't think he would at all. Like he certainly, you know, when, when I first started out, like there was obviously this journey of being like, oh, how do I feel about her having sex with random people? And that's fair enough. But I don't think it was ever jealousy either. It was just like, a, oh, how do, okay, I just need to like adjust to this. And yeah, anyway, there's not much to that question. Am I allowed to say, we can always cut it, <laughs> that I, I met a client um, <laughs> of yours for the first time the other day who was lovely and, uh, mm-hmm. and, and, oh God, we just bantered. We could, both of us wouldn't shut up. It was <laughs> really fun. Uh, but, uh, he's a chatter. Yeah. You, but I'm not surprised actually. Yeah. Yeah. It was both fun. You are. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> he said to me, um, I don't know what we were talking about, but he said, oh yeah, I, I met Mr. Love. And I was like, huh? <laughs> what? And he said, oh, oh yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he said, oh, I went to Jenna's <laughs> gangbang, however many, oh, and oh, the bloody infamous gangbang. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and he said, yeah, it was, it was Haunted. really cool because he was, you know, sort of standing there and I realized that that, that must be him. And yeah, I don't know. Anyway, there's, there's no point to the story, but it's just really cute that, you know, he sort of <laughs> clocked him and, uh, yeah. Yeah. A couple of my regulars did. Yeah. And when I saw them afterwards, they were like, was that? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. Precious. Yeah. And then he said that you sent, uh, all of the, um, all of the newbies to one shower and all of the ones that you met before to another shower. And I was like, oh, that's because like all the good people could get to know each other and mingle and all the possible weirdos could be segregated. (laughs) (laughs) It actually, no, No. it's because they were on two different levels Mm. and all of our belongings were in a room next to one Uh of the showers. So all of the people I knew and trusted got sent to that room. Sure. And I was nearby as yeah. well anyway, but I just thought. 
I like my story put, better. Yeah, and the people I don't trust, they're on a different yeah. level. But yours works too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like my story. <laughs> All the good people could have a little mingle. Uh, anyway, yeah, so yep. the point of the story being that, yeah, I, I think it's really cute that a lot of the clients have an awareness of Mr. Love and a respect for him, I feel. Like even all the clients that I talk to about him, because that's the weird dynamic that we have. Um, I, Mm -hmm. they just, everyone just seems to adore him and, uh, he's quite a quiet person. They do. They bloody love him. He doesn't get it. I tell him all the time. I'll be like, my client today was raving on about you. And he's like, they don't even know me. Yeah. What the fuck? (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, but you're great, babe. (laughs) He's funny. Anyway, sorry, but yeah, he's through. he's quite a quiet person and obviously I don't have these um, emotional conversations with him about, you know, there's these in-depth things about jealousy and stuff. They're the sort of things that you and I discuss at two in the morning um, on my couch. But I think, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know what his internal feelings are, but uh, but he deals with everything with grace and I think that that's, that's so wonderful. And I think you guys have a really healthy style of communication and I think that's the massive thing to being a partner of a sex worker and um, or being anybody in the life of a sex worker um, is just it's just communication is is <laughs> yeah deep like, literally like communication <laughs> is just so important and I think discussing yeah. those um, those feelings when they do arise and uh, and setting some boundaries you know I know some workers who uh, their their partners are not comfortable with them discussing X or Y or existing on on you know, ex social media platform or whatever. And that's, uh, that's fine. I think you set the boundaries that work for you mm. in your relationship. And uh, yeah, if, if Mr. Love is still, still here, it's a good sign. So. So I think this is an excellent segue into our misconception of the week, which is not really a sex work specific misconception, but it's some, another question that I hear a lot. Um, a lot of my clients will ask me, about jealousy in terms of polyamory and they'll say like oh wow so you just don't experience jealousy (laughs) and I think that's I think a lot of people think that people who are polyamorous or non-monogamous in any sense people in any kind of open relationship that they don't experience the feeling of jealousy Mm. and coincidentally this morning Mr. Love was talking to me about how apparently uh, something he read online who knows if it's fact-checked said that sexual jealousy is a constant across all known human cultures. So it's definitely not the case that polyamorous people or non-monogamous people are like this weird super breed of people who don't experience jealousy. That is definitely not the case. And I thought I might share something because I experienced jealousy uh, a little while ago, like two months ago, I think. And, um, and to me, it's like, I don't think there's anything wrong with experiencing jealousy, with having that feeling come up. I think it gets a bad rap because a lot of people maybe don't handle it in the best way and it's the actions that you take rather than the feelings that you feel that can be the issue. Um, So my boyfriend, he had – it had come about that one of his partners um, was going to be in town for a week and her and I have not met and she's been around for years as well. Um, so I, you know, know all about her and all that. And his other partner lives really close to him. And he just said, hey, I thought maybe we could all meet up over that week, you know. And so nothing wrong with him suggesting that, right? But I got this pang of jealousy. I felt sick. Oh, wow. And I was like, whoa, okay, what's <laughs> happening? Hello. And I sat on that for like 10 minutes and then I responded and I was like, hey, um, I'm having feelings. I'm, I, I, don't, I haven't processed why yet, but I'm just feeling weird about it and I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the problem is. That sounds like a really great idea, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm, having a, I'm having a thing. I don't know. And then we, you know, we went on to talk about it. And, and this is, I've experienced that feeling once before and it was with him as well. This was years ago. And same thing happened. I went, whoa, I'm having feelings. And we sat down and talked about it. So you, she's existed for all this time and you know she exists. And 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 this was just a confronting, the, the meeting was what was confronting? Or, okay, this yeah. is what you explored. Well, that was what was weird. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and, that's, and I didn't have an, and that's the thing with these kind of feelings. Sure. I didn't have an answer. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't have a, this is not okay. I was like, this seems like it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I'm having feelings. Wow. So what am I going to do about that? Yeah. 
Um, and so I talked to him about it. And I, like, I think that's, you know, I can communicate, as you said. Yeah. It's kind of the answer to everything. Um, and what we worked out was, so for one, that afternoon I was heading to a booking that I was dreading. Right. That I really, really didn't want to go to. So I wasn't in a good mood. I had I had that, you know, that feeling when you'd have school holidays back in the day and on the last day of school holidays yeah. you were just so fucking depressed because you had to go back to school the next day. That was how I was feeling that morning. So I was, I was not, I was just not in a great, place and I was dreading I was feeling sorry for myself already right and then I was seeing my partner in a few days time and now we only get to see each other maybe once a month and so we talked this through and I real and you know we, we're coming up on six years together right and you'd think you'd think things would be pretty solid by now but I, I, I think it would be different if we lived together or if we if we saw each other you know even every week or whatever what I realized was that I have this thing where the longer it's been since we've seen each other even though we're keeping in contact but the longer it's been since we've been in the same physical space as each other the more my insecurities creep in mm. and you know the second I see him again I'm like oh yeah no great we love each other we got a great thing going I feel really secure about this but when there's been that little bit of distance and I don't, I mean, people in long distance relationships might experience this as well, I imagine, or maybe it's just me. Who knows? It doesn't matter. Um, I get slight every kind of day that goes by <laughs> this tiny little bit more insecurity kind of pops in. And what I worked out is what I need is that moment together first. Like right, if, I see. if we were to, to catch up and then, um, you know, the next day see these people or whatever, yeah. I'd feel secure in what we had. But and then and then adding on top of that, having the fact that she was gonna be in Sydney for a week. She doesn't live in the state. She was gonna be there for a week. I also had this sense of like, oh my God, they're gonna be spending a whole week together. Like we've never had that opportunity. Um and then his other partner who lives literally around the corner from him, um, you know, I've already expressed to him that I, you know, I'm like, oh, like they just you know, they get to see each other so much more often, right? Because they just they just do. That's just and it's the similar thing with the with clients seeing other workers. It's not because she's better than me. It's because they live around the corner from one another, yeah. and the dynamic of the relationship is different. Like, sure. but so all of those things combined is what made me feel icky. But I had to talk that out. I had to work that through in my mind. I had to talk to him. I had to get through that shit booking that I didn't really want that I really didn't want to do, you know. And then the next day, I was like cool. Well, now I understand why I felt that way. Um, And he obviously, because he's a fucking legend, he was like, cool, never bring it up again. And I was like, no, no, that's not necessary. Like, it's it's not that I don't, you know, but, you know, because I I think I do want that to happen. I do want to meet these women because they sound bloody awesome. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. If you know, but I just, it just needs to be done in a way that I feel secure about my relationship with him. So there you go. I do experience jealousy. I'm not a superhuman who doesn't. I just think it's about how you deal with it. I think that's important to mention as well when it comes to Mr. Love. He very well might be comfortable with X and Y and Z, but at times I'm sure that he experiences jealousy as a human does and feels a little bit oh uncomfortable with certain things and and or if he hasn't until now, maybe one day he will. And uh, I, I don't know if mm-hmm, people, mm-hmm. yeah, just have this idea that Mr. Love has this superhuman superpower that he just doesn't feel these yeah. things. He's a human being who sh- feels emotions like the rest of us. And uh, yeah, I'm sure from time to time or one time in the future, he will feel those those things. And that's what you work through in a relationship with somebody that you love. Uh, I think that people do all the time, whether it's, you know, somebody at the office that you're a little bit jealous of or uh, somebody you know, an old lover that's been in touch or something like that. You, everyone experiences jealousy from time to time, whether your partner is a sex worker or whether you're in a polyamorous relationship or not. I, uh, that is bang on. And I think this idea of he may well in the future is really important as well yeah. um, because I've always operated under with the idea of like this, everything is constantly evolving, right? And um, we can't know how we're going to feel in the future. And we don't do it so much now. But when we first opened our relationship up, when I first went into sex work, when we first became polyamorous, um, every year on our anniversary, I don't know, it wasn't intentional, but it just happened that way. I guess because we were just suddenly like alone and like, oh, I guess we should talk about shit or whatever. (laughs) 
Um, I would be like, hey, so how's all this going? Like, how do you feel about me being a sex worker? How do you feel about me dating other people? How, how's that, you know, is, are we, is this still, you know, because obviously I had his consent to, to start exploring all these things, but that isn't, you know, consent is, is constantly evolving, right? Um, and at any moment he may suddenly go, oh, actually, and, you know, if Mr. Love turned around tomorrow and was like, I feel really weird about you being a sex worker, like, woof. That'd be a big problem. Like I, my response would not be, all right, well, I'm packing up my shit. Like, because that, you know, that's not um, realistic. But again, it's about him saying, if, if that were to be the case, if he suddenly had these feelings and when I'm feeling conflicted about it, he needs to bring that up to me. And then we have this conversation and yeah. we say, okay, fuck, well, what do we do about yeah. it? Like, do I aim towards retiring at some point and like don't, don't worry not likely um or or do we or do we need to go our separate ways or what like what does that mean um and again it's just bringing up the feeling having the conversation and then working out how you're gonna move through it or not if it means it's the end of the two of you then that's what it means but you know yeah simon has sent us the question of the week How does a client spoon their sex worker? Reason for asking, I'm a cuddler. I've been little spoon only once because of the following. Normally I'm on my back with the provider giving me a side cuddle, which is awesome still. How can I be big spoon when I risk poking my naked bits into your naked bits? Do we misalign our spoons? Do I throw a towel over myself? What are the alternatives? So when I read this question, I had a revelation because I would say 98% of the time, the cuddling in bookings, the client is laying on their back yeah. and I'm cuddling up kind of under their arm, yeah. which is lovely. Like it's a very lovely position. And I've often been like, why is that always the position? And then I read this and I was like, oh my God, is this why? Because I've never, ever thought about the potential genital touching with naked spooning. And I'm suddenly realizing, is that why that's the default p- position? Because primarily the men that I'm seeing are worried about spooning. Is that the problem? I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's a, a conscious thing. Maybe I'm wrong. But, yeah, I definitely mm. find that it's the same. Probably not. Same sort yeah. of cuddling thing. And I feel like. Yeah. I just feel like my client's trying to relax and I'm a real schmoozy little snuggle bug. And so I'm just yeah. like creeping up all over too. them. Yeah. So I think that's yes. part of it is that I'm. I, I feel the same yeah. way. I'm just crawling <laughs> yeah. all over them and they're just laying there being like, Jesus, give me some yeah. space. <laughs> I feel like that's part of it. Um, I I mean, I've, I've spooned with, with heaps of clients, not, I think, naked. I think usually it's sort of before things or I, I've had clients get up and put some underwear on or have a quick shower and put their their aunties mm-hmm, back on I don't know if that makes sense but you know uh to to have a spoon mm-hmm. but I uh yeah I just don't I don't feel like it's a, a common thing um but I I, mm. I think my my butt is big enough that if we spoon generally yeah. if you're not erect my big chunky bum is going to be in the way of of any genital touching and anything um so I'm not really concerned in that regard but yeah you're mm. right I don't, I don't know so yeah is it that's, conscious that's or is it thinking. not like I don't know Pre any sexual activity, I might be a bit more concerned about being in that yeah. position. Yeah. But particularly if it's a post sex cuddle, like, so when you, okay, when you do like the spooning sex position, right? Where it's like doggy, but you're on your sides. Yes. Am I explaining yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. You've got to be yeah. down like a bit more in it. Yeah. It, yeah, it's actually like it's not that easy. And maybe again, it's because I've got a big ass. I don't know. But it's actually not that simple for it just to get in there. Yeah. Like it's not like yes. you just spoon each other and then the dick just falls in. Yeah. Like it, it does actually require a bit of a bit of positioning and a bit of butt lifting on, on my part at least um, to get it in there. So I think it's actually not that much of a concern. Of course, rubbing, you know, genitals against genitals is is not – yeah. what we want no. um and it depends on the bodies too like some bodies really fit in well and you're like well we're touching and some bodies they don't like that you're sort of touching their tummy or whatever instead so it's fine mm. i definitely have had people jump up and just put knickers on that yeah. would be a good solution if it's something you're worried about but i don't think i yeah i don't think i'm too worried about it yeah i find usually the alignment is just like the the dick is sort of against my butt <laughs> cheek or my back like that's fine no worries mm. like just, yeah yeah so a yeah. slightly misaligned spoon, I think that's but all. yeah, I think I think to get down where the genitals yeah. are, you've really got to get in a funny angle. I don't think it's uh, a huge issue. And I guess you can also always ask, 
you can say, would it be okay if we spoon? Do you want me oh. to put my pants on or, or a towel on or something? I guess that would be I think it's appropriate. So cute but I'm seeing this person soon spoon. and I am definitely spooning them. I get to see him <laughs> in a few months. I'm very excited. Oh, lovely. Well, you'll probably get spoons from both of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have this thing. I like the shit that like people think we worry about in bookings is so not the shit that we actually yeah. worry about. Like <laughs> True. So I have this thing. Like I am so uncomfortable like laying on my back and chatting. And I'm also like not very I'm not very good at cuddling and chatting in general. Like I think cuz I feel like I need to be face to face. I feel like I need to be like I guess I'm just a very animated chatter. So I find myself going between they're like laying on their back and I snuggle up and then I get up and keep the conversation going and then I'll have like a little snuggle. But then like once the conversation is ignited, I'm just too like excited and I can't stay cuddling. So I just always stress about that. That's all. I find so often my clients, particularly the men, are like laying there chill as fuck and I'm just not. And I don't know if they're like, can you just lay down? I think also there's pressure sometimes, though, as a, yeah. as a worker to be entertaining. And I feel like sometimes if you just True. were to lie down and close your eyes and really relax, you feel that thing of like, oh, my God, do they feel like they're not getting their money's worth? Or That's a really good point, I'm actually. Lazy I or? think that's probably my main motivation. Mm. Yeah. Which sucks because it's really nice to snuggle in and, and genuinely, yeah, you know, that's a special moment for them as well. Is. Yeah. And certainly plenty of clients like that. Yeah. But. You know, I don't want to feel like I'm just slacking. Mm. Hmm. All righty, shit people say this week is comes from uh, a thing I did on Instagram. It's on Snapchat as well, but I'm too old to understand how that works. Yeah, um, same. And there's a little video I did for a company called Scene, S-E-E-N, which is just one of those like, you know, questions you've always wanted to ask sex workers or whatever. So one of the question, one of the weirdest questions on the list, you didn't have to answer all of them, but I did because I'm me. And one of them was, are sex workers just sex addicts? And I was like, what? That's the weirdest fucking question. Like, I don't know. It's not something I've come across before. We're sports addicts. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Throwback yeah. to a season one shit, people say. Deep cut. Um, and I think, you know, I said, uh, my answer was something like, do you ask people who, um, work at McDonald's if they're burger addicts or something like, or who work at grocery stores, if they're grocery addicts, you know, cause it, I was like, it's just a job. Like what, what? It's weird. And so sh- this person commented and said, Hmm, it's hard to wrap my head around that. I just can't understand that because in a way you do have an addiction to either the physical or mental act of sex to be a sex worker. That's the only job that should require you to enjoy what you do. Otherwise, I'd assume someone is coercing you to do it. I mean, that's a wild jump in logic, but okay. Uh, Too many other jobs, in quotation marks, for that to be the answer. And I responded, hey, why is the bar for sex work higher than for any other job? You don't expect a dentist to be addicted to teeth, and that's okay. But if a sex worker isn't addicted to sex, then they've been coerced. Like how, how are they the two options? Yeah. It's just, it's coming back again to that whole, are you either empowered by the job or exploited by it? Like it can only be one or the other. You have to either be addicted to sex or you're being trafficked. Like what? And then I said, plus conflating addiction and enjoyment is really dangerous. I enjoy my work, but I'm not addicted to sex. And I, I think that, I mean, that's a whole other conversation, but I think saying that, you know, you have to enjoy what you do. And that means you have to be addicted to it. Like, yeah, addiction and enjoyment, not the same thing. She said, the bar for sex work is higher and it should be higher than most other jobs because it's a very fragile line you walk when you're doing this Uh. quotation marks job and not enjoying it. Sex isn't just an act. There is a lot exchanged during sex. But society today tries to normalize stuff like this and it isn't normal. But it's your life and I can't be mad at the choices you make for you, love heart. Like, (laughs) fuck off. I said, well, maybe stop trying to speak over my lived experience then. Sex work has existed forever and in every culture. So if that's not the definition of normal, then I don't know what is. No one is asking you to do it just to respect us. And this is this question of normal comes up a lot. And who knows what the fucking definition of normal is. But to me, if something happens pervasively, then may, it doesn't mean it's ethically a good idea, but it means it's normal. If it's everywhere, then it, that. I mean, that's what that word means, you know, to me. She said, I guess you don't grasp the concept of an opinion or when I said do what you choose for yourself. 
My opinion shouldn't affect you one way or the other. Just your, like your lifestyle doesn't affect mine. Love heart emoji. I said, no, no, I grasp the concept of an opinion. What I don't understand is why you think that your opinion gives you the right to speak over a marginalised community. Your opinion does affect me, unfortunately, and continuing to perpetuate stigma kills. And this is like this whole, it's just my opinion. Like, and this is, uh, that's this generation of like, it's just, oh my God, I sound so old. <laughs> but this generation of, it's just my opinion. I'm allowed to have uh, an opinion. Uh, yeah, sure, you are. But. When you are speaking publicly about things you fucking don't know anything about, Do you need to um, share it? it's a bit of a different story. Yeah. And you're, well, yeah, and your opinion is going to have an impact on me. Yep. Uh, she said, it shouldn't. And regardless, if sex work was around for decades, so was slavery in every culture. So that's not a justification to do it. And I was like, yeah, no, I, I mean, I didn't say it was a justification to do it. I said it's the definition of normal anyway. She said, it's a lazy profession if you want realness. Nothing I'm sure you'd like a child of yours to aspire to be. Nothing will ever change my mind specifically. But do you, love heart emoji. I said, lol, you try it for a week and come back and tell me it's lazy. Yeah, right. Like, what is that? What do you mean it's laziness? Like, what are you fucking talking about? Uh, I said, I would much rather my child be a sex worker than somebody who perpetuates stigma and harm by commenting their uneducated thoughts on the internet. Not asking you to change your mind, simply asking you to stay out of discussions that you don't know anything about and to stop speaking over people with lived experience. And she said, no, I simply cannot not give my opinion Ugh. on a public forum which purpose is to share experiences and opinions. No, you, you can, but all right. I do know that sex work is not a real profession. It doesn't require thought, skill or experience, really. Either you be strong in your chosen, quote, profession and not cry when people disagree <laughs> with it or stop sharing with others altogether. As always, the choice is yours, love. I'd love to see her in like a social experiment. We get all of these people who have these comments on social media and we put them in like a big brother house and they have to be a sex worker for a week. And we just watch, you know, uh, in, in the least exploitative sounding way, but watch how they, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how they excel at the job without any thought, without any emotion, without any whatever, and, uh, and how easy and lazy it is. I would love to just watch it. Oh, what a joy. That is the dream. That is now. I've always said I'm not a dreamer. I now have a life dream. Yeah. I need to. I, I need that to happen. We have to round them all the fuck up yeah. and put them in a house yeah. and force yeah. them to do sex work. And now I'm on a list somewhere. <laughs> right. I know it's it's such an unethical <laughs> statement to make, but like it's you guys know what we okay. mean. You know, like so you think you can yeah. dance, but it's like so you think you can hook, so you think you can whore. You know? Hook. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Work on it a should be because it, it is that like really babe yeah and this is what so because she said it doesn't require thought skill or experience i just commented oh babe there's no need to tell on yourself like that <laughs> because i was like wow you must be fucking shit in bed hun right. like really and shit in relationships and shit with interpersonal stuff like if you honestly think that that the job requires no thought skill or experience Ooh, like you're really outing yourself as somebody that's not fun to be around in an intimate context. Um, and then this idea of you should either be strong with it and not cry when people do. I mean, for starters, I'm not fucking crying, babe. I'm good. I'm like watching telly and chatting on Instagram. I'm fine. But this idea that I, uh, you know, I should sort of stand up for sex workers' rights and that's me crying because somebody has a different opinion to me, that's not what's happening here. I don't give a shit how many people disagree with it. I just think that people should stop doing harm, yeah. you know? Like, I don't care what you think about it, but don't, don't actively contribute to stigma that does harm to our community. That's the problem. Anyway, she's a loser. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I look forward to seeing her uh, on the premiere of our, our new show, though. On the show? Yeah. So you think you can haul? So you think you Can't can wait. haul? I think she, I hope she makes it. Would we be hosts or judges? Both. Both. Yeah. We'd be everything. Yeah. yeah. Judge, okay. jury, and executioner. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then they die yeah. if they don't make, like, we just execute Pretty them. much. Great. Right. Welcome Done. to stigma. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or they get sent to jail. Yeah. Right? Or they get disowned yeah. by their family. I mean, that's, you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Dark. They're forced to never be employed again. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Thank you to our peculiar patrons. Our even more generous somebodies are Timmy, Andrew, Adam Smith, James E, Lachlan, Sub London, Miss Billy, Nora Knightley, Leslie, Scott Watson, 
Andrew, our secret admirer, Wheezy, Ellen, Liam, Fritz Your Tits, Mr. E, Scott C, Simon, Skippy, FN, Our Footstool, Greeny, Ophelia Parker, Aaron and Cobber. And our extremely generous somebodies are Aaron, Andrew, Pete, Sienna Saint, Brino, Adam Moore, Nick, Wombat and B&J. Thanks for hanging out with us again this week, guys. We hope you didn't experience any jealousy listening to this episode. Uh, (laughs) We think envy is a curse and that you should um, indulge yourself in lust instead. So if you're wanting to, uh, you know, to spend some time dwelling in any of the seven deadly sins, that would be the one we suggest. And we suggest you do it with one of us. Mm. And if not, then fine. Mm. One of the rest of our community, we promise we won't be jealous. We will just be lustful. Good. Good sign off, Hoz. Mm. Good job. Mm. Yep. Getting better and better. What can I say? Bye. Bye. Please look out for us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. Our name everywhere is Somebody You Pod, as in podcast. Our Patreon starts at just $3 a month, and you can get all of our episodes ad free and a day early, plus bonus episodes, behind the scenes action, bloopers, and more. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the voices of sex workers. And remember, somebody you love might just be a sex worker.